In Jerusalem, children stations of the cross for peace. On the Via Dolorosa, more than a thousand children and students from all Christian schools in Jerusalem retraced the way of the cross, calling for peace in the Holy Land. Bethlehem's economy stalled by war in Gaza. The Christian community in the Holy Land has remained steadfast and persevering despite the devastation, ruins, bombs and panic. In prayer, hope is rekindled. We remain human and together free from resentment. Lenten pilgrimage to Dominus Flevit, the silence of those who suffer. Pilgrimages to the sites of Jesus' passion have begun in Jerusalem, tradition that dates back to the first centuries of the Christian era and is perpetuated by the friars of the custody of the Holy Land. The hymns, prayers and antiphons of the daily procession to the Holy Sepulchre. An immersion in the procession that takes place daily in the Holy Sepulchre. Rereading passages from the guide booklet and getting to know the faces of those who, over time, contributed to the composition of the prayers and antiphons. The devotion of the Stations of the Cross originates from the Gospel tales of Jesus' passion and death. Since 1233, when the Franciscans settled permanently in Jerusalem, millions of pilgrims from all over the world have walked the Via Dolorosa. This Friday of the second week of Lent, the Way of the Cross also had a special color. The prayer with students from all the Christian schools in Jerusalem that brought together more than a thousand, including children, young people, parent and teachers from custody schools, Armenian schools, Anglican schools, Latin Patriarchate schools and La Salle brothers. The start of the Way of the Cross was in the Shrine of the Flagellation, where a white scarf bearing a prayer for peace was distributed, a sign opposing the violence and war of this time. The procession then wound its way through the old city, going through the stations of Jesus' Passion and ending at St. Saviour's Parish. Dear children and young people, this morning we did something very important and meaningful. We walked the Via Dolorosa, the Way of the Cross, and the Custers of the Holy Land continued, We want to be disciples of Jesus and follow in his footsteps. That is why we ask him for the grace to always keep our hearts free from hatred and the desire for revenge against those who do us evil. We ask for the grace that all walls made of enmity and hatred be demolished and bridges of reconciliation be built between people, between peoples, between believers of all religions. At the end of the Way of the Cross, His Excellency Monsignor Adolfo Tito Iana, the Apostolic Delegate for Jerusalem, imparted the blessing with the relic of the Cross of Christ. We wanted to do this way of the cross with students from Christian schools precisely to invoke the gift of peace. We could say it was an ecumenical way of the cross. There were practically all the churches, Christians of all denominations united in prayer, united in the desire to walk the same path that Jesus walked to save us. And we desire to walk it with him. As disciples of Jesus, invoking the gift of peace, as we know that Jesus died for the reconciliation of humanity. And so there is no better prayer than the prayer that memorializes the passion and death of Jesus, to invoke the gift of peace. So this is important for our children, you know, that they see that in the world we need a peace. So for peace we have to pray. So this is for you know for peace for world war. And our students also involved in it. So all the way they were praying for Gaza, for Palestine and for Israel for peace. 
what we did today, it was very important to our kids, to the students of all the Catholic, all the Christian schools in Jerusalem. So today we prayed in the same place where Jesus prayed. We walked in the same streets where Jesus walked. It's important today to pray for peace as Jesus did. We are here with the kids of Jerusalem. We, we, the, our voices go to God to pray for peace to Gaza, to Israel, to Palestine, to every kid who is suffering from that. Tutti questi bambini sono i bambini delle scuole cristiane di Gerusalemme che sono usciti oggi. All these children are children from the Christian schools in Jerusalem who came out today, went out on this way of the cross, the way of peace to pray to the Lord God, for an end to this war. They prayed for their brothers who are in Gaza, who are dying of hunger, of thirst, of cold. So many are wounded, they don't have a chance to be treated. And they all went out to pray to the Lord. The Christian community in the Holy Land has remained steadfast and persevering despite the devastation, ruins, bombs and panic. Seeking to rekindle hope, nurture humanity and unity and keep the torch of prayer burning in the face of darkness. I lost my home, I lost 12 members of my family in this war. There is no life, no dignity, no humanity. No one can stand what is happening there. For them, the church was a safe place, but it was bombed. The Latin church was bombed. The church, who upholds the values of coexistence and peace, is committed to promoting these values by creating channels of communication and dialogue as an alternative means to violence in the face of challenges. In some asylum centers, it has been able to provide assistance, deliver medical services and medicines, and distribute food and water. Saint Pope John Paul II declared, there will be no peace in the world without peace in Jerusalem. The conditions are difficult, life has become difficult. We need the support of the world, of the international community, to find a solution to this problem and to do everything possible for people to live here with dignity and love. Bethlehem, the city of the Nativity, is also affected by the war in Gaza. The economic situation of many families and young people has worsened due to the absence of pilgrims, who are the driving force of the city but the custody of the Holy Land is strongly present to preserve what remains of the Christian presence. Rejoice in hope, in tribulation have patience, persevere in prayer. Share with the saints their needs and pay attention to hospitality. With the same words of St. Paul, the guardians of the Holy Land conduct their mission and spread the teaching of St. Francis on peace, goodness, love and fraternity reaching out their hand to anyone in need or suffering and embracing them warmly. Our country is going through daily and continuous political, social and economic challenges. However, in spite of all these difficulties we go through and experience, our young people remain the most important thing to maintain Christian identity. They are the children of the Holy Land, where Jesus was born, raised and lived. <laughs> For us, our existence in this land is to serve the man, the people of this country, to maintain the Christian presence in the Holy Land, to serve them, to be with them and by their side, to help them resist.
It would not have been possible for the custody of the Holy Land to accomplish all these efforts without the generous support of their friends around the world. Be an integral part of the Holy Land by helping to plant the seeds of love and hope. Blessed are the merciful. This is the second week of Lent. Pilgrimage to the sites of Jesus' Passion began in Jerusalem. A tradition that dates back to the first centuries of the Christian era and is carried on by the friars of the custody of the Holy Land who animate these liturgies in anticipation of Easter. The first shrine destination of the pilgrimage is the small church of Dominus Flevit, built along the slopes of the Mount of Olives. The chapel is shaped like a teardrop to evoke the gospel episode in which Jesus wept for the future of Jerusalem. And to accompany in prayer those who suffer so many sorrows, the religious communities present in Jerusalem participated vividly in the celebration and filled the shrine. Brother Sebastian Eclimes, in charge of the place, tells us that he misses the pilgrims very much, but today he is happy to receive the local community for the celebration. Even if there are no pilgrims, we have another work. That is, we fix the whole convent garden and also do renovations. So the pilgrims, when they come another time, see it all looking good, even the church and everything else to serve God and also serve the brothers. Holy Mass was presided over by Brother Piermarco Luciano, Vice Master of Formation, while the homily was given by Capuchin Brother Paolo Messina, because all the meditations of the Lenten journey were entrusted to him. In this first pilgrimage, he led us to reflect on the silence of those who suffer, recalling some moments when Jesus was moved and manifested his compassion in a special way, as in the encounters with the widow of Nain, with the sinner in Simon's house, and with those who mourned the daughter of Jairus. These are all episodes in which Jesus does not turn away from those cries. He does not turn away from that suffering, but instead he comes right up to it. He enters into it with his whole self, with his person, with his body. And that's what I think we have to do today as well. Toward Jerusalem, in this time in which we are surrounded by so much suffering, right in this place. We might not see this suffering, it might never reach our hearts, it might never reach our ears, because we can't perceive it. There is a silence, perhaps, that envelops all this suffering, but we must not let ourselves be overcome by the fear of being involved. We must take upon ourselves this very suffering and accompany it. And from the shrine of Dominus Flevit arises an invitation to join us in prayer and to walk this path of Jesus, asking him for a heart capable of listening and compassion for the many who suffer. We are now halfway through our journey and would like to approach the daily procession as pilgrims, trying to reread some passages from the guide booklet. With the help of Father Carlo Giuseppe Adesso, an Italian priest and professor of church history who has been in the Holy Land serving the custody for three years. A special feature of the procession is the use of Latin. The friars who use it daily know it by heart, but pilgrims who participate can follow the translations offered in at least six different languages. From the church's vast literary heritage, the Franciscans have wisely and carefully chosen the hymns prayers and antiphons most suitable for the procession. Saint Venatius Fortunatus is one of the authors. Born in Italy between 530 and 540 AD, at some point in his life, he left the city of Ravenna where he had gone to study. And from there, in order to fulfill a vow to Saint Martin of Tours, who had cured him of a bad eyesight, he made a pilgrimage and went to France, where he died at an unspecified date between 600s and the 610s. 
Venantio Fortunato è il primo grande autore del mondo. Venantius Fortunatus is the first great author of the Middle Ages and he is a truly remarkable author because he takes the best of classical antiquity that he had studied in Ravenna and through his poems combines it with the mystery of Christ crucified, dead and risen. That's why his hymns became very famous and we also find them here in the procession in the Holy Land. Saint Venatius came to the Holy Land, but to him came a relic, a stone, a stone from the Holy Sepulchre. And he composed a poem about that very thing. But there is a much stronger connection which is given by the cross, of which Venantius is the greatest singer. So Venantius Fortunatus, as I have said, writes a great many hymns, but he produces six precisely for the cross. Among them, two were chosen, selected by the Franciscans, to enrich the four stops, four stations of the procession that we carry out every day here at the Holy Sepulchre. They are very famous. One is called Vexilla Regis Prodeunt, and the other is called Pange Lingua Gloriosi. E l'altro si chiama Pange Lingua Gloriosi. The Franciscans took these hymns, broke them up, adapted them precisely for this procession. Partiamo dal primo, Vexilla Regis Prodeunt. Let's start with the first, Vexilla Regis Prodeunt. Advance the banners of the King's Cross. So the cross is presented by Venentius as the standard, the banner of Christ's victory. This is a clear reference to the Gospel of John. In John's Gospel, the cross becomes almost the scepter that Christ wields to win against sin and against death. Venentius says the same thing, but he also says something else. Vexilla Regis, the banners, the standard of the King. We know that the feast of Christ the King of the Universe is a recent feast. Pope Pius XI wanted it in 1925. But the whole Middle Ages, the whole spirituality of the Middle Ages, was a great devotion and love for Christ the King. It is here, in Venantius' hymn, we find them when he says, Vexilla Regis Prodeunt, that is, they advance and proceed. Avanzano, procedono. Father Carlo Giuseppe says this detail attracted the curiosity of scholars for a specific reason, which was to accommodate a real relic of the cross of Christ that St. Helena found right here in this chapel. Per accogliere questa reliquia della croce. Venentius wrote these two hymns to accompany the procession that carried the relic of the cross to the monastery, where it was then received. So these hymns were written precisely for a procession. And so it is fitting that the Franciscans included them in the prayer accompanying the daily procession. giusto che i francescani li abbiano presi all'interno di una processione. Questi inni sono ricchissimi, bellissimi. These hymns are very rich, beautiful. The cross is sung in so many possible ways. In the hymn Vexilla Regis, the cross is sung as a tree, a fruitful tree. The reference is to the tree of earthly paradise that brought damnation. Instead, the cross brings salvation. But the cross, and this is typical of Venantius, is called the steel yard, that is, the scales, the balance of the great redemption. This is an image we find only in Venantius Fortunatus. Jesus Christ paid a price that price was weighed on a scale. The scale is the cross by which our sin, our debt, was atoned for. We are almost at the final stage of our pilgrimage to the Holy Sepulchre. In the next video, we will listen to the second hymn by Venentius Fortunatus, and how we pilgrims can participate, come closer to this grace of the cross of Christ that saved us from sin.
Open yourself to a gesture of solidarity and support the mission of the custody of the Holy Land. The Christian Media Center spreads the good news of Jesus by making known to the world the spirituality of the holy places and the lives of the Christians who live here. Your contribution will help us bring the proclamation of the risen Lord, the most urgent of all, to men and women of every language and nation. To help us concretely, open the QR code. Your choice makes a difference.